Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the stock-to-flow model. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. As always, when we discuss a model that is not mine, we have to give credit where credit is due. There are a lot of people that don't do that, but it is important that you provide credit where it's due. And the creator of this model is Plan B. I'm sure a lot of you guys know him over on X, formerly Twitter. He is His handle is 100 trillion USD. I'll link his, his, um, his profile down in the description below in case you guys want to give him a follow, which I believe that you should. Now, the stock to flow model is generally a fairly optimistic model. And I don't know how many people were around back in, in 2019 in, in, in Bitcoin, but the there was sort of there's multiple stock to flow models, right? I mean, obviously there is the stock to flow cross asset model, there is the stock to flow model sort of calling for hundred K, but I mean there was also another model before that one where the average price of Bitcoin predicted by the stock to flow, I think, was around 55k. And and last cycle, you know, that original model at around 55k, I mean, this one went all the way up to 100, but that original model when around 55k it was actually fairly accurate. Um, would have uh, it, it would have almost basically been been perfect, I, I think, if it you know sort of that 50k instead of the 100. But if you're not familiar with the stock to flow model, it's basically defined as the total Bitcoin supply divided by the flow of annually annual newly issued Bitcoin. <laughs> so it assumes that since it's a deflationary asset, the scarcity will increase the value. Now, obviously, there's a lot of arguments about, you know, supply isn't necessarily indicative of demand. But we also know that through the cycles, Bitcoin has not necessarily been lacking in demand either. It seems like every cycle there is some new narrative that we cling on to, um, and and we see the price of Bitcoin go up. Now I will remind you that narrative follows price, not the other way around. And I do think a lot of people will sort of cling on to certain ideas as to the reason why Bitcoin's going up. This cycle, it was largely due to the ETFs, right? I mean, how many of you guys have have probably sort of um, assumed that the reason the price goes up is because of the ETFs. And I'm not saying that there haven't been positive flows there. Um, but, you know, the ETFs launched and then from, you know, from March until October, the price of Bitcoin wasn't really going anywhere, even though the even though we continue to see people buying up those ETFs. And one of the things to remember is if you look at at ROI, sort of the cycle ROI from the low, <coughs> um, I'm not looking at the right ones, right? Uh, ROI from the bottom, and you compare this cycle to two cycles ago. I mean, it's kind of the exact same thing. And we didn't have ETFs back then. So it, it just goes to show, like, yes, there's always a narrative for everything. But it doesn't mean that the price wouldn't be doing something similar without that narrative. Right, there would just be probably another narrative that we would cling on to. So going back to the stock to flow model, what's really interesting is that the model from the you know that was very popular last cycle predicted sort of a hundred k, and and it didn't quite make it there. This time it's predicting much higher, right, a million. Now, I don't really like being the bad guy in these in these situations, but I I have a hard time believing it's going to go to a million this cycle. I could be wrong, right? I, I certainly could be, and and there's a, <coughs> it's always important to remember that. I mean, there's been plenty of my models that have have been wrong, but in this case, right? In this case, if you remind yourself that the original stock to flow model that had an average price of 55k for last cycle, I wonder what that one would be saying uh, for this cycle, but. Do you guys remember in the last video when we talked about the pie cycle top? And I just want to remind you really, really quickly what we talked about in case you missed that video. <laughs> so if you look at the pie cycle top, one of the things that you may notice is that every cycle, 
the extent to which these moving averages cross diminishes to the point that last cycle they barely crossed. So if you take the moving averages and divide them, you can see that you're getting diminishing peaks. You see that? Diminishing peaks. And so there's a chance that this cycle they don't actually cross just because you, you see that diminishing peak. Because in order for them to cross, it has to reach one where these moving averages are equal to each other. <coughs> but if the peaks continue to diminish, there's a good chance they don't cross because last cycle they barely got to one. Meaning this cycle, what if they only go up to 0.9 or something? So what's really interesting, what I like to do with all these models that are out there, even the, even the optimistic ones, right? Even if I don't think Bitcoin will go to a million this cycle, that doesn't mean there's no validity to any part of the model, right? I mean, again, it's not the worst model. I mean, it has a pretty good, <coughs> I mean, it looks pretty good. But you know what I notice, right? And, and I'm sure you've noticed it too, is that every cycle, it tends to get a little further away. So the first cycle, it was way above that line, right? The stock to flow line. And the next cycle, it was above it, but not as much. And then the next cycle, oh, not as much. Last cycle, it barely got above it. So what I'm suggesting is what if this cycle... It just continues that pattern. So what we're going to do in the same way with the pi cycle top, where we took the moving averages and divided them, we're going to do the same thing with stock to flow. But in this case, we're going to take the the, the, the price and, and, and look at it with respect to the stock to flow line. So we're going to take the deflection of it. Now, what do you notice? Again, diminishing peaks. What's really interesting is that if you draw a line through that peak and that peak, and let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> if you draw a line through this peak here and, and, and you know, sort of roughly connect it to that one and that one, we actually tag that trend line in, in March, which is only more evidence that it was the mid-cycle top back then and the market was overheated. And I, I said this back then, right, that the market was overheated and, and that we likely would get a cool-off period. But now we've had that cool-off period, and now Bitcoin's back to new highs. I wonder if this line is something to keep in mind. Along with the pie cycle top, diminishing peaks. What if we go back up and tag this trend line at some point, you know? And, and so I, I just want... To, you know, to keep that in the back of your mind, that there's a chance that something like that happens. Um, also, remember, there's no guarantee you tag the trend line, right? I mean, last cycle, it tagged the trend line, and then the, the price of Bitcoin did go higher later, but it didn't tag the trend line again. So, I mean, that's also something to consider. But I, I think looking at the deflection of the move is, is a good way to, to look at the market. Because I think a lot of people just sort of look at the model and assume that, well, it has to go back up to the line, right? It has to go up to a million. And if it doesn't go to a million, I wouldn't assume that that means the model is a failure because with any model, there's things you can learn. <clears throat> just like with the pi cycle top. If it doesn't trigger this cycle, I mean, it might still trigger, right? I mean, maybe it does trigger. But if it doesn't, it doesn't mean the model's a failure. It just means you have to dig deeper into it to try to tell, to try to figure out what the model's telling you. Just like with the stock to flow model. It doesn't mean that there's nothing there. Look at the deflection. And then you start to see the story for what it is, right? And that's why, that's why last cycle, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people were disappointed that Bitcoin didn't make it to 100K, but... The reality is the stock to flow model, if you follow it, I mean, was doing a really good job of tracking the price of Bitcoin. Just because it didn't, you know, predict the exact peak doesn't mean it's a it's a failure because you have to remember all models are wrong, right? There's not a model out there that is going to be 100% correct. 
despite what all the gurus will tell you, there's no model that's 100% correct. So, you know, I, I see what I see happen is when models don't go exactly according to plan, you know, all the, all the people that were sort of relying on them get very, very upset. But you should go into it assuming that all the models you follow are going to be wrong in some way. And it's not about predicting the exact way in which Bitcoin moves. It's all about, is the model helpful to you? And if the model is helpful to you, then it's worthwhile to follow. They're helpful to me <coughs> because I like it looking at the models in, in you know different ways, right? Looking at the deflection of the price with respect to the stock to flow model and sort of looking at the 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 peaks and how they diminish with time. And in 2013, which by the way, there's been a lot of similarities between 2013 and, and 2024. Um but in 2013, you can actually see the second top, the second peak was actually higher than the first peak in terms of the stock to flow model. But in 2021, the second peak was lower. So it's impossible to know exactly how it's going to play out. Maybe it'll be the same, right? Maybe it'll it'll go up to the same level. Um, I don't know. It's impossible to know exactly how it's going to play out. But remember, even with models that you might feel like are are, are not exactly perfect, which none of them are, that doesn't mean you can't find something interesting to observe. So, you know, I, I think what, what Plan B has done with the stock to flow model has been great. Um, I think it's led to a lot of people, you know, becoming interested in Bitcoin, which is what we ultimately all want. Um, and also, I, you know, I think that, uh, you know, some of his predictions in late 2021 were really accurate. I mean, he got like the monthly close three times in a row, which I thought was really fascinating. So, look for the good in the models, right? Don't look for the for the one thing it didn't get right. Look for the things that it, it helped you with. And I, I mean, I do think last cycle, the stock to flow model was really instrumental in helping to identify when Bitcoin went up, right? And I think, I think plan B would also agree with that. In fact, I know he would because he came on the channel and, and said just as much when we, uh, we interviewed him <coughs> a few years ago. But anyways, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. I'm still stuck in traffic on Struggle Street with being, you know, the sickness. So we'll wrap it up there. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.